Hello, brothers and sisters of the Temple of the Majorai and all of my followers. So this is going to be an additional response video to Eli Mercury. And it's going to discuss a few different things. First, and the biggest thing that I want to discuss is the fact that he keeps referring to the Temple of the Majorai as a cult. So I was referred to a framework for determining a cult, it's referred to as the Advanced Bonewitz Cult Danger Evaluation Frame, version 2.7. It was copyrighted in 1997 and 2008. You can find it with a simple Google search. I will also post a link to this in the bottom of this video on my YouTube page. If you scroll to the bottom of the page that I'll link, it will provide you with a framework of different things to counter in. Uh, for example, internal control, external control, wisdom slash knowledge claimed wisdom slash knowledge credited, dogma, recruiting, front groups, wealth, sexual manipulation, sexual favoritism, censorship, isolation, dropout control, violence, paranoia, grimness, surrender of will, uh, hypocrisy, uh, being a hypocrite. So those are the 18 different factors it looks like that this framework specifically uses. And I know there's other ones as well. And generally I believe it's a one through 10. Uh, so one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. So you can personally, if you've been part of the cabal and if you're watching this, if you're part of the temple, I implore you as an individual to go through and read it in the YouTube, uh, in, in the comments of this section. You don't have to specifically say who you are. If you want to go for it, you don't have to though. Anybody that is part of the group knows that we're kind of picky about who joins. First, you have to join the outer group. Now the outer group is meant for vetting. See, I, now I don't quote me on the time frame. It was either 2012 or 2014, I think, that during that time, if you joined, you were basically like you would send in information and ask for discipleship and you would be reviewed by the black court. And the black court generally just makes up the different tower masters. You would be reviewed, and if you were deemed that you were a good candidate to join, you would be an, allowed to join, and you would be an actual inner member. This stopped due to people trying to join to spy and try to bring drama. It's happened a lot in the past if you check through YouTube and if you do a Google search. But the main reason for this stopping was due to drama. Uh, we wanted less of it, so we haven't. We had an outer group. We had a process people had to go through that most trolls wouldn't want to go through anyway. So the six months, uh, the six months to one year that it would normally take, most trolls wouldn't want to go through that. But the vetting process was a combination of both time and effort. You would send in journals. You would be active. You would talk with your mentor if you had one. You would be part of group discussion. You would basically be present and show that you wanted to be there. Now, most of the information that's handed out was previously handed out through the grimoires that Somnus Dreadwood, aka Eric, published. Those aren't very easily found anymore if you only physical copy. There are some pirated PDF copies floating around online. I don't personally recommend downloading them. That is this copyrighted material, even if I do believe that it is possession of the spirits and the spirits did give it to him. They allowed him to channel and write it. Uh, some of the information in the grimoires that he wrote were it was stolen from other people as well, but that's outside the point. Uh, the point being that the information that was mainly available was available through published material. The other material that's available was private that would generally either be handed out through the AGM or EAGM, or it would be handed out through a tower master to other people. Like, for example, when people would meet at Coven, it was a common time at Coven where things might be handed out or given out or shared uh, private mentor groups, possibly over the phone. But a lot of the information was handed out privately. It was handed out, for example, I have multiple students down the path of atrophy and I've shared things with them. Some I've shared with some, some I haven't shared with the others. No two students are exactly the same. So you don't teach, or I don't personally teach two people exactly the same way. So to say that we're a cult, you need to first understand what a cult is. The term gets thrown around a lot by media. 
it's a buzzword. It gets thrown around a lot. And instantly when someone hears the word cult, things like Waco pop up in their head. Uh, or what the date pops up in there, depending on how old you are. We don't, so for one, we're picky. Uh, for two, the information that comes down, once you're part of the group, once you're part, like for example, if once you, I've accepted you as a student, it's not like I make a ton of money off of anybody. I don't do this to be wealthy. I have a day job where I do spend quite a bit of my time of the day, upwards of 12 hours out of the day. Uh, and I know other people in the group put out a lot of their time, other tower masters do as well. Uh, I can tell you with the amount of time I put looking through journals, responding to questions, uh, and responding to the different group chats that I have going, I put out a lot more time, a lot more time than the investment in what I asked for as far as financial requirements. I put out a lot more time. So I don't know in what way he's claiming, Eli is claiming that the temple of the Madurai is a cult. We don't require you, like you said, to get divorced or to choose your spouse. We don't require any of that. Uh, the requirement, if you want to join, is that you send, I think it's either 50 or $100 and something else, uh, personal information in through the email that's listed on, on the website. And we deem if we think you're a good candidate. If you're a good candidate, you get sent the outer group link. You join the outer group, you tell us who you are and about yourself and your progress, and you go from there. If you're interested in a path that has a tower master, not all paths currently have a tower master, look at them available. But if you're interested in a path that does have one, you can reach out, or sometimes they'll reach out to you. I do reach out to individuals that show that they're extremely interested in atrophy. It just depends on the situation. That tends to be how it works. After some time, if you've shown promise, you will be invited to join the inner group. That could take anywhere from six months to a year, generally. The inner group actually isn't very much different than the outer group. The biggest difference between the two being that the outer group, some more information might be shared. There might be some additional information. You'll be allowed in the form that's connected to the, to the website, which is probably the biggest difference, where some information is also shared. Uh, so, This meeting is being recorded. The main purpose of this video was to go over what I've already discussed is that we are a cult. We don't fit the Temple of the Magi as a whole does not fit the quality of what a cult would require. Uh, we don't force you in. We don't try to keep you in. We don't ask you to bring in new members. You can if you want. And we do say that the more the merrier, but we don't require you to bring in more people. We don't give you more position and more power if you do. Uh, there's nothing that would normally be mandated from, if you follow the list in the link below, uh, in the bottom of the, this video, you'll see that we don't really meet the requirements. I mean, as far as like we are more of a religious organization, a spiritual organization, so there is some dogma. And there, I mean, you will find some things in regards to that, but not in regards to what Eli's speaking about. A better term is that we're a lodge, a magical lodge, a brotherhood and sisterhood, a group of like-minded individuals. That's a better term. Using buzzwords is an attempt just to try to smear us as a group because he doesn't agree with our, our teachings. So if you follow with what he's doing, trying to call it a cult, it's obvious that he's trying to push people away from us so that they can go his way. One of the things that we've spoken about from the very beginning is the enemy of knowledge, the enemy of what we do. The sole purpose of the Temple of the Majorai is ascension. It's spiritual ascension. What we term and what many other groups have termed apotheosis. That's the goal. He mentions uh, lock-ins or he mentions demonic possession. He mentioned Toma the Scarab and VK Jehanim specifically, saying that, oh, they can't be trusted because they're demonic or they might be demonic. So they can't be trusted because of that. 
because their soul went away. And when you join the temple of the Magi, they make you packed in and linked with demons and your soul's gone and you're linked to hell. Almost everything when he said that is incorrect. I'm not going to speak on Tomo the Scarab or VK outside of stop making hate videos repetitively. Everything you said, you said in your previous video. With that said, no, when you join the Temple of the Majorai, we do not force you to connect with a demon and give your soul away. I don't know where he's getting this material, so you can find PDFs of our material. I will link a image from one of the PDFs of the Blood Pact. I'll also show it in a screen right now. I'll have it edited in. You can pause on this screen in just a moment and you can view the blood pack. So the blood pack, when we, when new people join, we recommend new people not to actually do the blood pack. We recommend new people to actually take time to learn the system, see if it's something that you want to do and stick with. Like any form of devotion and spiritual practice, it's something that you should truly devote yourself to if it's something that you're extremely interested in, but it's something you should take time to do. A lot of people don't. Uh, unfortunately, the previous AGM was very edgy in his writing and he wrote to a specific crowd. Not only was it the left-hand path crowd, but he also drew in younger people. He wrote in a specific way that it would. I mean, it's fairly obvious when you read the writings. And with drawing in those people, a lot of people jump the gun. A lot of people will practice for two or three weeks and say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna do this blood right. And I'm gonna dedicate myself. And then a couple months later, they figure out it's not for them. Eli is the one who claims to have went through the entire clip off in one day. He's the one who claims to have went through the entire process of lich dump in less than two or three weeks. Everything he does, which other people have dedicated entire lives or many, many, many years to, he does in a very small fraction of the time. So when he says you are pacting and giving your soul to a demon, that's not true. When you do the blood pact, which most of us do annually, if not more than annually, when you do the blood pact, you are making an agreement with the archdemons, with the fighter lords and ladies. You are giving a part of yourself. You are giving your life essence or your lifeblood. And in turn, they're also giving you something in return. They're planting a seed inside of you that you can grow and nurture. Anybody that knows anything about planting knows that if you don't nurture the seed, the seed eventually dies. There's been plenty of people that have stepped away after blood packing in. They're still alive. They're still walking around. They're still practicing. When you have the seed planted, you can grow the seed and you can nourish it. The point of the seed is to make you more like the blighted so you can become more like them. It's a process of transfiguration of your soul. Now, listen to those words, transfiguration of the soul. It's a physical change in apotheosis of the soul. It's not a replacement of the soul. It's not your soul being removed or taken away. It's you bettering yourself. When you go to the gym, if somebody goes to the gym every single day and they hit the weights hard, they do cardio, they hit their, their diet is solid. They do that for a year. Their first year, they'll gain between 10 to 20 pounds of muscle. They do that for five years. Do you think that person's going to be recognizable or will they have went through a type of transfiguration? They're going to have changed. They're going to be different. The same thing can be said for somebody that goes through spiritual transformation. They're going to be different. They're going to be a different person. But that doesn't mean they aren't them. So him saying that you link yourself and sell yourself and you're not you anymore, that's not true. You're just the best version of yourself. The goal is to be the best version of yourself, to be a better version of yourself each and every day. So no, what Eli says is entirely incorrect and he has a misunderstanding. The black grain, which by the way, Eli, is the proper pronunciation, is a tool that's used to allow you to transfigure your soul. 
each tower builds one and make one, and you will make one differently. But it's nothing more than a cool configuration. This is being recorded. So to to come close to a conclusion in this recording, um, there's a few other things. So I don't know where you really get off teaching, Eli. I mean, there, there's no hard, fast rule that you can't teach. But the general idea is you don't teach until you have some experience. Would you, for, if we compare it to martial arts, for example, most people wouldn't want to learn from somebody that's a white belt or someone that only has six months experience. Generally, you want that person to have three, five, 10 years experience in what they're doing. I think the general consensus is a minimum uh, four to five years, five years. But I mean, it varies person to person. But again, you're also 19 or 20 years old. And you'll notice that BK mentions that said, and so does Tone the Scarab. We both mentioned this. You have virtually no life experience. You are still a child. And you still act very much like a child. The people that were your friend, BK for one, the people that were your friend, you very easily turned on. Do you know how many times VK warned you against something and you just didn't listen? Did you know that money was spent on you via people that care about you, like large sums actually, pretty large sums, was spent on you on your behalf to help protect you and keep you safe? Multiple times did VK reach out to me and others, and not just VK, other people too, about you. I've reached out to you specifically myself before all of this went down. It doesn't matter who reaches out to you, you're going to believe what you want to believe. And at 19 or 20 years old, you think you know everything and good for you. But your followers and people are reaching out to me, messaging me and adding me and making videos about working with you and about your empowerments down, 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 and about what you do, you're doing, just being less and less and less potent. It's not just one person, it's a multitude of people. Why would so many people speak out against you? I've never had one of your empowerments. You've actually hired me. I've never had one of your empowerments. I would never pay for one. I've never paid for any of your services, but you have people that I don't even know reaching out to me talking about you. Let that sink in. You get what you pay for, and if you pay for a $20 empowerment, you're going to get a $20 empowerment. There's a reason why if you reach out to me or any of the other imperators or EAGM, we don't do very much for $20. Our time is valuable and we put a lot of time into it. It might take your plumber only 20 minutes to fix your sink, but think of how many years it took him to get to the point to be able to do that in 20 minutes. You're not paying him for the 20 minutes that it took to fix your sink. You're paying him for his knowledge and the years he's put in and his craftsmanship. That's for any of the followers of Eli or anybody who comes to this and thinks about that. In regards to everything that's going down, Eli, I don't want to curse you, but everything that you've done shows that you are dangerous and that you're not treating your, your even your followers right. There's going to be more to come in the future in regards to this, and I hope you do get help. I still think you do need help. I think you need a therapist and I think you need maybe more help than that even. I don't know. I don't really know you personally. I just know from the videos that you post and from what you post, uh, you definitely have delusions. I'm not the only person that said that. People that have literally been around you and stayed with you have said you have delusions. These are people that are in your life frequently. They say you have delusions. Is it more possible that everybody else is wrong? Or is it possible that you are wrong? I'm gonna go with the possibility of you being the one in the wrong. 
you have 30 or 40 people kind of pointing the finger at you, it's not always going to be them that's wrong, Eli. It could be you. I have points. Like, for example, when you say, look at how demons are painted, who paints those pictures? Who says what they are? Mainly the Christians. Mainly the JCI. They're the ones that generally point that picture, that paint that picture, and they're the ones that have the imagery that try to make demons look scary. But if we look, there's plenty of groups of angels that are far more fearful than demons are. Flying fiery wheels of eyeballs. Sounds kind of scary looking, I think. That almost sounds eldritch like, eldritch horror like. You can say demons are going to lie to you because it's their nature. Who says that's their nature? Again, the JCI says that's their nature. Who says angels are good? Who says celestials are good and that they're all loving and caring of you? It sounds like the JCI as well. Everything you're quoting and you're trying to say about the infernals comes from the JCI. I do primarily work with the Temple of the Magi. Having lived in Louisiana, I also practice Louisiana style voodoo. I've also worked with the Egyptian pantheon. I've worked with other pantheons. So to say that I'm being controlled and manipulated by infernals is not true. I work with Lord Mordekoth and Lord Zazazel predominantly. Those are the main two spirits that I work with. To say that either one of them, if you've worked with either of them, Lord Zazazel is far more, if you compare him to almost any angel, especially the true form of any of the angels, he is far more humanoid and far more human in action. And when you speak with him than any of the angels that you talk to. To compare the angels and celestials to demons means you haven't researched and actually read what angels truly are. You're being manipulated and you don't even know it. But the people around you do. The people around you that reach out to me. The people that have tried to have interventions with you, they know it. I know none of this is going to make a difference for you, but five, six, ten years down the road, when you look back, you'll, you'll have wished you had listened to the multitude of people that had reached out to you. I don't think I'll make another video. This video was predominantly just made to discuss the what a cult is and how the Temple of the Magi does not fall into cult practices. Some other things were pointed out, but uh, that was the predominant focus of this video. Uh, I don't know if any additional videos will be made in regards to the Eli situation. I do have a plan to continue developing more videos for the YouTube channel, but uh, this is it for now and more to come later. Right, infernal blessings to everybody and have a wonderful day or actually evening break.